Hi, it's Gwen Fox, and I am thrilled that you are here with me. Now, during this series of Making It Simple, we've talked about the principles and the elements of design. What we're going to do, talk about now, is how to put the principles and the elements together to make a fabulous, solid painting. Which elements do you add with what principle to make a painting exciting? And how can you make it yours? As I said in the principles video, I consider the principles to be the blueprint of your painting and the element to be the fun stuff or the fluff as I re refer to it. Now, the principles are, we're just gonna go over this, that's contrast, movement, rhythm, pattern, balance, unity, and emphasis. Now, which of the elements can you use with which principle? Well, actually, you could use probably any of them. But there are some elements that just work a little bit better than others. And no, you don't have to use all the elements in each painting. You get to choose which is best for you and best for the painting that you're doing. Now, let's break down the principles and see which elements work best. First, there is contrast. Contrast is a huge principle as it adds so much excitement and your best contrast is used, well, to the best advantage at your center of interest. There's also opposing color, which makes a great contrast. Now, here's a Brian Rutenberg painting, which shows opposing color that is a visual feast for the viewer. Here is a Richard Diebenkorn, which shows how line is used to show contrast. The different width of line gives different feelings. Now, there is Italian artist Morago with his bold shapes and great contrast, which adds drama. Movement. This is what takes you through the painting so the viewer knows where your center of interest is located. This can be accomplished by color. Another Rutenberg, king of color, moves your eye through this painting. You start on the left with the cool colors and move gently to the right into the warm. Line is another element that works great with movement. Jan Griggs uses lines such a beautiful way that it invites the viewer into the painting. Now here is a beautiful abstract by Linda Glassberg that has tons of movement. I love this painting. Rhythm, I think rhythm and movement are very close together, but rhythm is the repetition of elements of art in a non-uniform yet organized way. Rhythm is much like music, you know, we all love different rhythms and same goes for art. Now, here is Penny Stewart's painting of a countryside in New Mexico. And if I'm not mistaken, it was painted in Pilar, which is just outside of Taos. Look at the repetition of shapes and color, such a gorgeous painting. Now, pattern. This is either applied pattern or implied pattern, meaning that you can put the, pat uh, the pattern on or you can imply that the pattern is there. This can be done with texture. Rebecca Kroll did this in her painting where the texture is accomplished with marble dust. This is applied texture. Another painting is with texture is Klimt's Tree of Life painting. This is where pa pattern is everywhere. I honestly think that the man dreamed in pattern. The pattern, this pa painting could be considered in the rhythm principle as well as the movement. Then there is Polly Hammett's painting with pattern that stamped onto the clothing of the woman in the painting. And then there's balance. There is symmetrical and asymmetrical. Balance is one of those funny things that you can have a large shape and you can balance it with a small shape. Here is another painting by Morago, which shows his small red shape on the right balances the large red shape on the left. And The Last Supper by Leonardo da Vinci is symmetrical. Unity. Now, as I've said before, unity is super important as it holds the painting together. It's your decision, though, on how you do this. Which element are you going to choose? You can accomplish this with 
unit with uh, accomplished unity with value, color, texture, and line. Now here is a painting where line is used to showcase its unity. It's one of my older paintings where the color and the line hold this painting together in a very neat way. Now, this little beauty is by Laura Malone. It's held together with texture and color, and I think this painting has immense emotion. I love it. When using color to unite the painting, having a limited palette is a huge advantage. By limiting your palette means using three to five colors. Now, black and white are free. If you haven't tried this, please do so, because you'll love it. Now, value is another way to have unity. This painting is by the Italian artist Afro. Afro oh, also used shape to emphasize his center of interest, as the center of interest is an organic shape with geometrics. Emphasis. Remember, emphasis is where you want the viewer's eye to go, and another name for that is center of interest. This can be accomplished with contrast, such as this painting by Morago. Bold shapes, dramatic color, and red and orange draws your eye into the painting as you absorb the mystery of his work. This painting also uses the element shape. Remember the term Papa Bear, Mama Bear, and Baby Bear? Here's where Baby Bear shines. Putting your small shapes or shape at the center of interest is another way to direct the viewer's eye to where you want it to go. Now here's one of my paintings and the person is definitely emphasized with shape and color. The name of this painting is Journey into the Unknown. Line is also a way to emphasize where you want the viewer to go because if you put line at the center of interest, it holds the viewer's eye and they stay with your painting and this is what you want. Now you have some ideas of how the principles and elements work together and with this said, Use your creativity to make your paintings different. Break the rules. Make your paintings exciting. We all have a tendency to play it safe by following the rules, but remember, your difference is your significance, and the key is to believe in what you do. You know, explore new ways to make your paintings exciting. Now, I hope you've enjoyed this series of Making It Simple. I've enjoyed doing it. I really have, and I'll see you next week with a new video, perhaps a demo. I haven't decided what to do, so if you've got suggestions, let me know. I would love to have them. So I'll see you next week. Love you. Bye.